Hello, and welcome to this episode of the GPCA podcast. I'm your host, Saru Suleja, Saudi Aramco and GPCA Youth Council. I'm delighted to be joined today by Mr. Mutlaq Al-Murashid, Abu Hamad, to speak on supply chain. Thank you, Sara. It's a pleasure to see you. Welcome. Welcome, Abu Hamad. The GCC's geographic location and hydrocarbon resources make it a very valuable tra- trading partner in the global chemical industry. What would you say are the opportunities ahead to expand the region's role as a key exporter of chemicals and petrochemicals? We, as, as an oil and gas-based countries, that is really our competitive advantage. If God wants us to be an agricultural country, God would have, would have given us a river. We don't have a river. We're a desert. The basic strength this part of the world has, it's hydrocarbon resources. And what do you do with your hydrocarbon resources? Basically, you turn it into usable product globally. And we have the infrastructure from our oil company, gas companies. And now we develop over the last 35, 40 years, one of the world's largest producers of petrochemical and chemicals. And I think we have lots of room to grow with more availability of feedstock. And the feedstock, of course, we have to be realistic, uh, Sarah, it's not going to be gas all the time. You know, the days are gone when we in the GCC have ethane and, you know, all things being equal. But today, it's going to be mixed. I think we're going to expand our industry using some of the ethane we have to stretch it longer and have it with propane or normal butane. I will not go to ISO because cracking ISO is difficult. So I will do that and including also NAFTA, light NAFTA. So we, we should do that because the chemical industry is grown by, with GDP, if you look up. And there is still plenty of growth. Even with this noise we hear about all things and decarbonization and green and and a lot of the noise we hear about the green is what we call greenwash. They're washing bad stuff with green to make it look like it's environmental friendly, like electric car. If you take an electric car, it's full of chemicals, the batteries, and if you are using uh, electricity from a coal-fired plant, it's the most worst polluter in the world. <laughs> so. Combustion engine you know, or something is 10 times better than that. So I think we have plenty, plenty. So this leads me to my next questions. What tool, regulation, or instrument specifically do you think is needed to enable the region's growth as a competitive chemical trade globally? I think the big thing we need in the GCC countries, we really desperate for the last 30 plus years for bilateral agreements. We do not still have as a GCC block, or even as individual states, some of our states have individual bilaterals, but we need bilaterals with major trading partners, like the EU, like the agents, like America. We need these things. The other things we need, Sarah, is taxes, treaties with other countries. Today, we have very little tax treaties with some of the other countries, our GCC block. Some separate countries have better trade agreement, tax agreement, because if we have that, like the American have with the European, American have with the Canadian, and the European have with other, then we'll make our industry more competitive. Because we pay, for example, a GCC producer pays six and a half to go to European market, while the Americans, they pay zero to enter the European market. So that's just a simple to do with, you know, uh, bilateral agreements. Plus, of course, sometimes we pay double taxes. Some people pay tax here and they pay tax there because we don't have a tax treaty with most of the countries around. Saudi Arabia has some, Emirates probably has more, Bahrain or Kuwait or Oman, or Qatar has some, but in general, we lack that infrastructure that Europeans and the Americans have globally of bi- bilaterals and tax treaties. That's really what we need. Great points, uh, Mohammed, and very well articulated. Thank you.
Um, as you know, the w World Trade Organization, or WTO, has been attracting a lot of criticism for its outdated, uh, somewhat cumbersome policies and structure. As the role and standing of trade has moved on quite significantly since COVID-19, uh, giving more rise to trade perfectionism, uh, nearshoring and onshoring of supply chains, what role can the chemical industry specifically play in supporting and influence the modernization of WTO? What particular changes would you like to see in the future? We, we really, you know, to be honest, Sarah, we have not seen any major changes in the WTO since the 1990s. The organization being kind of uh, handcuffed by so many disputes of different major regions like the American or European with their uh, trade uh, protectionism, with their trade wars with China or somebody else. And that affected the WTO very badly. And unfortunately, globalization got a little bit of a uh, bad name, became a political wagon that politician, politicians, especially in, uh, during election time in America, they use it as a whip and they threaten to you elect me and I will put barriers everywhere. And of course, when they get elected, the, the chiefs suck some of that, but it scares people. Chemical industry is a global industry, we like it or not. 40% of what the chemical industry makes actually sold to other chemical companies. So we are really a B to B, most of us. So somebody in Europe is gonna need our stuff, like it or not, is gonna make Mercedes dashboard or tail lights or fenders or anything. He needs plastic or something from us or from someone else. So you cannot restrict trades the way they do. But we hope that we, in the chemical industry by working with other countries are all region like European have the EBCA, they're working with their government to to help really reduce these regulation, reduce this protectionism. The American Chemistry Council, we are we here who are in GBCA, GIBCA, the Euro, the agent uh, chemical and petrochemical. So there is a lot of work the chemical industry. But the last few years globally have been you know, when like Trump came and make all these protectionists, it was politically driven. This is really what's hurting the global trade. This is the politics. And let's hope one day, somehow something will happen. But uh, we, 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 we want to see the WTO progressing to a better than what it does today. Well said, food for thought, and collaboration is key, as you mentioned. Absolutely. We have to collaborate. Don't get me wrong, Sarah. We compete. Nothing wrong with competition and collaboration, especially in areas of common interest like decarbonization, catalysis, environment, improving living standards around the globe. We can work together as chemical companies. We compete in the market, but in other areas like environment, health, safety, we collaborate, and all of us are collaborating. It's it's the right thing to do. If you can improve safety in another company, we will not keep it from the other company because that is good for everybody. That's actually a human being. It's, it's competition, pricing, that's a different ballgame. But collaboration, R&D, in producing new things, in improving the environment, reducing the greenhouse gases, this is really a uh, thing, and the chemical industry is very good at that, actually. If we can get the politics out of it, <laughs> we are fine. <laughs> we are fine. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, GPCA published a new paper which discusses the potential for an FTA um, with key trading partners like China, India, China, India, Turkey. Turkey are now priority for us. Exactly. And so, how would you comment on this prospect? And how would it benefit the industry in the GCC and its respective economies? Well, look, we in the GCC have an open market. Really, it's good, but sometimes can be bad because also we have an industry to protect. Our industry, not the major chemical company, they don't need protection. But the smaller industries, the downstream industry needs some sort. So we have our markets open for everybody. But when we go out, 
people hit us with dumping and all these things. And a lot of it is politically motivated dumping to protect their own industry. It's kind of non-tariff trade barriers. That's how I look at it. You know, they don't make tariff on you because WTO rules and things. So they found ways to restrict you from their markets. And unfortunately, the WTO things when it came in the 90s, you can raise a dumping case, an investigation, without proving it. And the country that raised it gets six months, six months, restriction of any export while they investigate. Rather than investigating and trade continues, no. I, in my humble opinion, that's big mistake that was done in the WTO agreement back then, but that's too late. So we're struggling to do that, and hopefully one day that things get make common sense. You can investigate me, fine. But you don't restrict me from the market while you investigate me. And so GCC countries need the bilateral agreement to stop these non-realistic cases being raised. And India and China and Turkey are very strong trading partners for us in, in the Gulf countries, because we're a large exporter of commodity chemicals. The U.S. is a large exporter. So we say in Bal Arabi, like, <laughs> so America, we can't sell chemical like we make because they make the same and they compete with us and things. But India, China, Turkey, we have the advantage. They have all the downstream, all the huge population, the consumption, we have the commodity chemical. So we can actually complementary to each other. And that's, we are really hoping, and we are working, by the way, with our negotiators in the trade agreement, bilateral agreement with India and China and, in, and, uh, and Turkey. And there's an agreement hopefully soon to be signed with Pakistan. And we have been supporting the GCC secretariat uh, and the negotiator from GBCA. GBCA is really playing an act of all, very act of all. That's uh, very eye-opening for me personally, and I'm sure for the listeners. Thank you. You're almost, as you said, uh, guilty and, until proven innocent. <laughs> yeah, well, this is the sad part. Exactly, exactly. Thank you for saying that. So you're the chairman of the GPCA International Trade Committee. Correct. What are your plans and priorities for 2024? Really, honestly, what you said, Sarah, earlier, our priority is to give this bilateral agreement signed with these countries and expand it even more. We have not got into South America yet. South America is a big market for us, but unfortunately, logistically, too far. We don't have good shipping lanes between us and the Gulf countries and things like Brazil, which is the largest economy in South America or Argentina or other places. So now let's concentrate in the priority with China, India, Turkey. And if we can do with the EU, but the EU is more sophisticated when all kind politically driven, at least with China, India, and Turkey, the politics is less. And all in the Asian culture, so hopefully we can, we can do so. It's our priority as an ITC, and me personally as the chairman, is really to help the negotiator of the GCC secretariat in executing this bilateral agreement. Other one priority we have to us is to help our industry part members in the GCC with these cases of dumping. Because we found ourselves being hit by dumping when it was really not quote-unquote dumping. But it gets, unfortunately, a company in a certain country will lobby its government and suddenly they raise a case. And then they stop you for six months, like I was saying. You lose your market, no customer will wait for you six months. Absolutely. You know, the factory is running, they have to keep it running, they're not going to start. So this is really our two priorities at the moment. But of course, we do that training, we do development, we educate the people, we educate with the media, ourselves. So that's it. But really, really the priority is these two, because that's what really help our members. Our whole purpose of existence as an international trade committee of GBCA is to help the member access to market at a reasonable 
restrict less restriction at a reasonable cost. So as a last question, you're sure. here at the forum. How did you find the forum so far? Do you have any key takeaways or insights or learnings? I'm happy to see more young people like you into GBCA. Uh, we need to get the young people of the Gulf into the industry. That's the future. Most of us, including me, we are in our sunset. We're going to leave sooner or later. That's the law of nature. We cannot, uh, cannot fight it. <laughs> so, and then we need people to fill the gap. And we have the young, motivated girls and boys who can definitely rise to the challenge. And part of our challenge is to expose them to the industry, to give them the opportunity to participate like in the youth forum. So uh, that is really what we see. The takeaway is from the GBCA this time, there's great attendance, great organizing by the state of Qatar, one navigator, Magassaro. And inshallah, next year in Oman, we see even better because we always strive for better in the case. And to see more young people coming to the forum, to the session, and getting more involved and to contribute more in the industry as in the science side, research side, or in the operational side, you know, commercial side, and, you know, happy, happy to see that when this year was really a great, attended by three ministers, as we have seen yesterday. So uh, that's, that's really what we like to see. And thank you, Sarah. It's great seeing you. Great for this opportunity. Now, Allah will be عمركم ويحفظكم. We have big shoes to fill. Thank you, sir. Much appreciate having me. Much thank you. Uh, this concludes our session for today. Really, I would like to thank again uh, Mr. Mutlik and Mureshid uh, Abu Hamad for joining us for the very eye-opening, very insightful discussion. And thank you to our listeners for joining this episode of the podcast. <laughs>